Hello, and welcome to another episode of Intune.Training, the place to learn how to use Microsoft Intune. It's the Steve and Adam Show. Hey, I'm Adam. Hey, I'm Steve. Steve! Adam! Man, I feel like I was just talking to you like a minute ago. Oh, no, it's, it's, no. Just, it's just like it's happening so quick, isn't it? I know. We haven't even changed clothes. Well, oh, I know. Well, it's because we've really started just doing this whole wardrobe thing, so yeah. we don't want you to know day to day, and so we're just going to start wearing the same thing every time. <laughs> That's the plan, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, let's just get on into this one. Uh, this is this is going to be great. Um, so something that's very near and dear to my heart, uh, Windows 10 feature updates. And um, if you followed me on uh, for config manager related things, you'll know that I've blogged about feature updates and how feature update uh, using native servicing um, is superior to using task sequences. <laughs> yeah, um, it is. It is. There's, there's just, it, it works um, for a lot of folks. It works great. If you're running in an Intune environment, that means that you've already kind of come to grips with the fact that task sequences, you don't need task sequences for maintaining your devices as much and all of those sorts of things. It doesn't doesn't exist in Intune, so you have to find other ways to do the things you're doing. Um, and so as such, feature updates are a great fit for that. Um, there's some, some caveats around feature updates and things that um, we're not going to go into here. However, I will direct you a self-promotion to my blog, asquaredozen.com. The link is in the description below where I've got um, several part series on feature updates in the enterprise. It's centered around config manager deployment of feature updates, but there's some good information in there. Specifically look for the information around setup config I and I. Um, that will help you with um, uh, configuring the way that your devices uh, are uh, uh, being able to put it put some configuration around how the feature updates deploy yep. so we're not going to talk about that in this video but what we are going to talk about is some of the um, settings that exist since the last time that we talked about software updates in Intune so you'll remember in our previous video we went through um, setting up our software updates policies and when we did that we set up a Windows 10 update ring and you'll notice that there's a new window, a uh, new tab. option sitting here. You can actually z scroll that out. But there is a preview for Windows 10 feature updates that now exists. So first, let's look here. And so we, we can see that we do have our software updates pilot um, policy set up and deployed. And um, we will look at that. But then also we've got the Windows 10 feature updates uh, preview. And so these two really are designed to be used hand in hand. Um, so you have to configure your feature updates uh, uh, policy first, and then also then you configure this and you target them to the same groups, and magic happens. That's and right. if you watched our video from a couple weeks ago, you'll see that policy sets are also a thing, and so you could take all of these things and roll them together in bundles and deploy them out. So um, lots of cool things. So this is kind of where we're where we're gonna uh, jump in. Exactly. This is I'm really excited about this. Yes, this is my. Um, yeah. <laughs> hey, Steve, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hi. I'll let you, I'll let you talk a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so probably the big thing to uh, mention around um, the feature updates uh, object in uh, Intune is it's a little bit different than what you would expect um, for or how you would have done it in Config Manager. Because what we're saying is we're setting that baseline that we want the OS to be updated to, rather than sitting there and saying we're going to deploy it and we're going to put our own settings in there. So what we'll do quickly, Adam, um, we'll come back to the, th the update rings and we'll explain why in a sec. But what we'll do is we'll okay, quickly okay, create okay. our feature updates um, because it, okay, it is okay. such a simple task. Um, yes. So we go create profile and we give it a, um, a, a, a logical name. Um, and what we call it is uh, to the pilot group. No, nope, we're not going to put a number on there, Adam. Nope. I really want to. I know you do. And this is where we're going to select from the drop down from 1803 to 1909 the version of Windows 10 we want to be at. So the reason why I'm telling Adam to not put a version number on there is look, we create this profile, and once we're happy that to go to uh, the new build of Windows 10 when it comes out, we would then just say, oh, we just go and update the policy to change the drop down to the new version. Rather than sitting there and creating a new profile, we just update the configuration there and say, oh, we're now on this version. So then you can go through and follow that same update cycle that you would for all of your other products 
or all of your cycle uh, update rings. So now we just hit next, and it's really complex policy. We select our group, and remember we need to hit the plus. Um, every time. Yep, every, every time. I'll never get used to it. Um, and just any device, any group will do. Um, and we hit next. And we now in, in, in your environment, you would hopefully have a pilot group yes. that you'd be deploying this to, but uh, in ours, it, pilot is production. So there we go. That's right. Um, don't do what we do around this sort of stuff because this is a full test tenant. It's got no production code in there. It's very, very okay. important to mention that. Um, so now we go back to the update ring. You'll note that <coughs> the policy was pretty easy to set up and we haven't had to worry about anything really complex on there. We're now going to go to the update and the reason why we need to go here um, is we need to change a couple of settings and it's going to be a scary setting for a lot of people. So if we go to properties, Adam, uh, on the left hand Sorry, side. Sorry, one second. That's right. Uh, and then we go and hit edit update ring settings. And what we need to do, and this is just a requirement of how we do feature updates, is we need to change the feature update deferral period from 30 days to zero. All right, and this is going to scare people because they're like, well, well that means that, I, that my updates aren't being deferred. And it's like, no, what it means is it's being managed by the feature update policy instead of this policy. That's it. The other thing you'll note there is, we are currently targeting semi-annual targeted and as you can see in the um, the box that Adam's just zoomed into uh, if you're <laughs> using 1903 or later SAC targeted doesn't exist anymore but what we can do is we can select a different version so we're just going to select semi-annual channel because it will disappear the problem um, but first we're going to click through on that link um, and this is where it explains what's going on with semi-annual channel and why they're moving away from it. So SACT has been retired um, and it's going to be merged with semi-annual channel because it's not really well defined on what it was. So this is where we're just going to change that uh, in the drop down back to semi-annual channel and it matches what we need because we only run the latest OS's here so we're running 1909. Uh, and we hit save and that will allow all those feature updates to be deployed out to those devices um, and any device that's running on 1903 or earlier will automatically get uplifted to 1909 the next time they call in and do Windows updates. And that's it. That's I it. And that's the, that's the whole deal right here. Yep. Um, so, uh, so while we were looking around on this, so number one, um, there is a page called What's New in Microsoft Intune. You should set up an alert on this page yep. or RSS feed or something and watch this because weekly Definitely. they will come out with all of the new things that are coming out. That's right. And so we were curious to know um, if, if I can type. type, and I think we've proven that I can't, so there's that. Um, so number one, there is this is this is a an update. But if we go down a little bit further, we'll see the next bit here. So number one, it talks about how they've added auto uh, support for deploying to autopilot devices, and what this does is this essentially says that you can target your policy to an autopilot registered device. So when the moment that a vendor registers your your device for autopilot or into your tenant, or you manually do it, or however you do it, um, you can then have a policy assigned to those autopilot registered devices um, so that it will get your latest baseline for feature updates. That's right. What it won't do is it will not actually apply that update during UBI. So think about Which that. Which is a I mean, good thing. Yeah, so your user turns on their machine and they're going through UBI and now they've got to sit and wait for a Windows update or you know for an actual OS update for 30 minutes or an hour uh, on their home Wi-Fi or something. Certainly don't want that to occur. So what will happen is that um, it's not a great first experience to the platform. It's it's really and not. That's so then, why it's so being held off for that first one day, just to you surf it lets Adam users in there. get in and do their things. So now they can. It, it, so it says here. It says it waits for the first Windows update scan after the device has been fully prevented provisioned after uh, typically a day, and at that point it will then 
download things in the background and it will start the setup without bugging the user, without delaying them starting their work. It will then allow them to um, postpone when they restart and all those sorts of things. So, um, so it really does create a much nicer experience for them. So we're gonna jump just a little bit further down here and let me type in feature update and that will get us closer. So then here's when they released feature update preview, which was the week of November 18th. Um, and so if we go down here, it gives us some information about feature updates and um, how all that stuff is designed to work. Yep. It tells you, um, uh, sorry, I jumped down to the to this uh, this policy begins rolling out to tenants this week. So it should already be in everyone's it should tenant. should definitely be in everybody's um, tenant. So if you were to click on through to this guy, this will take you to um, information about Windows 10 feature updates. And I want to say that that was the same as I got on this one. Yep. yep. Um, and so this is this gives you all of what we've just talked through on how to set up and assign your policy and gives you all the background information, the prereqs for it, all those sorts of things. So they need to be enrolled in, in, uh, in, in Intune and Azure AD joined or registered. They need to have telemetry enabled. Um, and so, you know, read through the prereqs if you're having trouble. This is definitely where um, you can come through and, and sort out all of the, the uh, information about it. But ultimately, um, what this is allowing us to do is, so, you know, we were looking at the, the channel thing here. And so I think we talked about this in the previous video, which was the idea that when you're, when you select this channel, you are subject to whatever gets released in that channel. And this, so this gives you no granularity, no flexibility really um, on which version of the OS gets rolled out to your devices. Well, it's, and it's, it's also doesn't give you the ability to sit there and say, well, I'm going to stay on 1909 because I have 30 months of support compared to the 18 months support I have on 18, uh, 1903. Yeah. Um, so now this allows you to essentially re-baseline or, or lock in a baseline for your organization and say, hey, you know what, this is the this is the version that we're going to stay on for whatever, and we're not going to automatically be moved when the rings move. Um, oh, and this is great, look, so I didn't even have to put the name in here because it puts the version right here uh, in the column yep. for us to be able to see. And the so that's very important thing to mention here is this is an update it's not a downgrade. It will not downgrade your OS versions to a lower version. Yes, so if your vendor is shipping you 1909 machines and you said we're staying on 1809, well, sorry, uh, you're gonna Break have to manage two versions. Yeah. Um, but so anyway, I think this is great because then it really gives you that, just that extra level of, of uh, granularity and control over what you get to do. and. Uh, as we were talking about uh, before the video here, Steve, is um, so you'll notice we were calling this pilot. And so you would just build out your rings for uh, your organization. So you'd have a pilot and maybe your SMEs or your app testers or whatever. And you would configure both things. So you'd have, uh, you'd configure your feature update profile for each of your release rings. And then you would also configure your um, configuration policies around. Um, for software updates for each of those rings as well. So then that lets you set up your deferrals and, and things like that for um, each of those rings. So I, I would assume, Steve, that what, what you would do there is you would say that, okay, you'd set up all of your rings, um, or be, uh, sorry, you'd, you'd select which feature update. So let's say that our pilot is now 1909, but it was previously, everyone was at 1809. Yes. So all of your other would say 1809. That's correct. And then as as you finish your 1909 ring, you'd go update the next one and say, okay, now it's 1909. And then that would release it in. That's correct. So you don't even have to mess with no. your ring uh, profile once you've configured it. You would just leave that one alone yep. and let that um, let that go. That's correct. That, and that's exactly okay. what the design is. It's to make life a lot easier. And so, th and so then that helps answer that question around this this uh, days this feature update deferral period days is that it does you're setting your baseline version you say when. today, and then you get to say when the when it, you're switching over. Yep. And so th that actually makes more sense as well. So previously, what you would do is you'd say they're Microsoft's going to send you the the update. Uh, so they're going to send it to you the day they release it, and then this would let you defer it. Yep. So now you've just moved this setting into that other one, so you manually flip it That's correct. when it's time. Excellent. Yep. Well, I think we've talked in circles enough on this. Yes. 
Yeah. Or rings. Yeah. Rings, hey. Cause, Ooh. Cause we've got rings. Yes. Um, so that's it. I, this was, uh, I was really excited to see this one um, come out. Um, feature updates are amazing and cool and yeah, do all, sort, all sorts of things. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Awesome. Much. I, I think that pretty much wraps us up on that one, uh, Adam. I'm, as everybody can see, Adam's very, very excited by this one. Um, yes. And hey, if you're going to MMS, I'm going to be talking about feature updates yep. even. So. Yeah, it's it's a it's it's a great product and it's a great feature to be added in there to allow us to control which version of Windows and that we're running. Um, so cool. Um, so I'm Steve Hosking. You can find me uh, on Twitter at OnPrem Cloud Guy. And I'm Adam Gross at Adam Gross TX on Twitter. Uh, and subscribe down there and all of that fun stuff and uh, keep sending through feedback and letting us know what we need to do better. Yeah, sounds great. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Adam. Take it easy. Take it easy.